Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about the polyatomic ions. This is actually continue from uh, ionic compounds, okay. All right, so um, most of the cation anion we have talked about are like something like this. Um, for example, sodium chloride is composed by cation sodium with a positive one charge and Cl with negative one charge. And these are cation anions. And each one of these is just one atom or one element. Uh, things like magnesium with a positive two charge, calcium with a positive two charge, copper with a positive one charge, chloride, fluoride, oxide uh, with negative two charge, or bromide with negative one charge, anything like that. So these are called a simple ion. They're simple ion because they're just one ion, okay, one atom. All right, so here what we're going to discuss in this video is called a polyatomic ions. So by name you can see uh, these ions are composed by more than one atoms. Okay, so let's look at this list, okay. So this is a list I copy paste from your survival guide. Um, module 5 page 7 okay so uh, there's so many different polytom ions and here are a few of them I think they are worth to mention okay so first of all you can see each one of polytom ion has a very look like a compound composition but they're not okay they're not compound they're just one ion uh, of course because they're ions so they carry charges so these are the uh, ions with negative one charge, ions with positive one charge, ions with negative two charge, and here are ions with negative three charge. And each part of my has a very specific name. Okay, it looks very complicated, okay, but let's look at the most of these ions, okay, you see that? All right, most of the ions are some elements with certain number of oxygens are following. Okay, all right, so let's look at a few of them, okay, let's look at Chlorine based ions, so here's ClO3 negative, ClO2 negative. Alright, let, let me box this, okay. You see, when a chlorine, one chlorine atom bound with three chlor oxygens, is called a chlorate. When the chlorine bound with two oxygens, okay, the only difference is a one, two oxygen or three oxygen, is called a chloride. You see, when you have more oxygen than the other one, the difference is just the suffix of the name. And let's look at and these two guys. Okay, let me use a different color. Okay. So we're looking at in the red box you have nitrogen based ions. So you have nitrogen bound with three oxygens and nitrogen bound with two oxygens. The difference is the number of oxygens. Okay. When you have three oxygens, you're called a nitrate. Seems like you're following the name of nitrogen, the change in the ending of the word to eight. We have two oxygen, it, okay, nitrite. They both have the same charge, okay. All right, so let's look at uh, another two of them. Uh, look at in this blue boxes, okay. So you have sulfur-based polytom ions. When you have four oxygens instead of three, you're called sulfate. You know, when you have three oxygens, that's a three oxygens, okay. It's called sulfide. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that you see the trend here, okay? And, and then they both have two negative charges, okay? So, so it's kind of determined by uh, what, ion, what elements you're looking at, okay? Now let's look at a couple more. All right, here is, let me use a green pen, okay? Boxing these two guys. All right, so this is a phosphorus-based polytom ions. PO4 with four oxygens, with three negative charge, it's going to be phosphate. Okay, PO3 with one less oxygen, it's called phosphite. So in summary, what you can see that if you have a certain element bound with different number of oxygens, okay, and you basically form a, a, a possibly eight or eight, depending on uh, do you have more oxygens or less oxygens. Not necessarily two or three or four, depends on the element. Okay? Like in the case of phosphorus and sulfur, four oxygens will be eight, three oxygens will be eight. 
and comes to nitrogen and chlorine, then you have three oxygens to be a two oxygens. Anyway, when you have when you are kind of more saturated by the oxygens, then you're more likely to be eight than eight. Let's look at a couple more. Okay. Um, You can see, um, let me box it with the blue box just to show you they also belong to sulfur, okay. Uh, when you have SO, sulfur, sulfur, but all, do you have one hydrogen in the front, okay, see that? So HSO4 is called a bisulfate or hydrogen sulfate. It's just putting hydrogen in front of sulfate. When you have three oxygens, you're called a hydrogen sulfide again, and it's also, or you can be called bisulfide. Okay, these are the names. Okay, let's look at the chlorine, okay. Uh, we already said that when you have ClO3, you are chlorate. Uh, what if you have ClO4, like in this one? ClO4. You're still called chlorate, but you're in the front you put in a perchlorate because you have one extra oxygen than the normal chlorate. So it's called per per means usually means actual one, okay? Perchlorate. Now ClO2 is chloride. Okay. Now you could have a ClO with only one oxygen, then that would be called still called chloride. But you have one less oxygen than the chloride, so you're called hypochlorite. Okay. Uh, very similarly, uh, you can find um, when you have, uh, excuse me, down here, phosphorus based, you can have phosphate, PO4, and the phosphide, PO3. But when you have uh, hydrogen in front of phosphate, then you're called a hydrogen phosphate. Okay, let me use green. This is called a hydrogen phosphate. This belongs to phosphorus family as well. Okay. Uh, so these are, they're, what I'm trying to say is they're not completely random, okay? It's very important to remember uh, which ones are eight, which ones are eight. Don't try to remember all of them in parallel, but try to remember them based upon the elements, okay? Like chlorine, and sulfur and nitrogen and phosphorus. This should cover more than half of the polytom ions in this on this table. Uh, one thing I have to mention about the polytom ion is I'm giving an example here. Okay, for instance, SO4 with negative two charge. Okay, uh, this is an ion. Okay, keep in mind this is not a compound. Okay, now the negative two charge here belongs to the entire SO4. So, so at any time, okay, any part-time ion should be treated as one whole. Okay, you should never break up the part-time ion as they were just one solid unit. Okay, the charge on top, does it belong to sulfur or any one of the oxygen in this case? No, they belong to the entire sulfate ion. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, because this is almost indestructible, so uh, we should never break them down to SOOOO and try to assign charge on top of this. So this will never work in this case. Okay, And given this as an example, and this applies to all of part-time ions, okay? uh, the SO44 down here shows four oxygens. And when you have no number of the sulfur, that's just one sulfur. That works as any other uh, compound. But uh, this SO4 thing, okay, this with four oxygens, okay, it should always keep this number. So, so you don't, this four and or one or any other number, okay, belongs to this part time ion. Should never, that's, this is a really readdressing the concept, you should never break it up, okay. The other thing I want to uh, emphasize here is I want you to distinguish between the polytomy ions and the covalent compounds. For instance, if you have SO4 with negative two charge, then this is an ion, because, simply because it has a charge. But if you have SO4 with no charge on top, then this is a neutral compound. Okay, the charge with or without, they're two completely different things. So when you have SO4 negative two charge, this is called sulfate. 
When you have SO4 with no charge as a neutral compound, then this is called sulfur tetraoxide. So this is uh, this the, the name of the part uh, the name of the non-metal non-metal combination or covalent compound was 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 discussed in in another video here. Okay, so they're completely different things, even though they look like each other except the charge, but that makes huge difference. Okay. So other than the ones I just boxed here, I uh, hear a few more I want to bring your attention to about the polyton ions, um, such as um, the first one on the list here. Okay. So this is the one uh, that's a polyatomic cation. So you can see that this is the only one with a positive charge. Okay, it's called ammonium. Okay, IUM usually shows a positive charge, and composition is NH4. The formula of this guy is NH4. Um, this one down here, let me show you this one, okay, is called acetate. Acetate, all right, then the, what look like is this, okay, C2H3O2 with negative one charge. Again, it has a charge, negative charge. It's, this is probably one of the most complicated ones, okay. Um, the other one is down here. You can see CO3, okay, CO3 with two negative charge. This one is called a carbon followed by eight, so it's called, named as carbonate. So this is another one I want you to pay attention to. Um, I think that's pretty much most of the instances. And I usually provide a list of this, just like exactly like this one in the test, okay? But it will be much, much more helpful if you can memorize the part ions, okay? So let's take a look at how we're gonna use these part ions to form a compound. Um, so obviously, since they are polyatomic ions, right? So it, they're gonna form uh, ionic compounds only, okay? Uh, they're, they're gonna keep their name. Okay, and the, the, the rule is very similar to the binary ionic compounds using simple ions. Okay, so you have to know the name, composition, and the charge of the common polyatomic ions, like the ones I boxed up here, up there. Okay, now um, since most of polyatomic ions are anions with negative charge, so most of the compounds containing polyatomic ions are going to have a metal in the front, okay? So when it comes to metal, you have to distinguish type 1 and type 2 metals, okay? Uh, and other rules are going to be pretty much the same. But for instance, let's look, take a look two examples. So when you look at this formula here, Na2SO4, okay? So you have to be able to say uh, that if you just con disconstruct this structure like what we did before with uh, binary compounds, this is what it should look like. Na is a cation with positive one charge, but this two shows the ratio. Okay, this two is not the part of ion. It shows there are two ions, two sodiums. Okay, that's the cation. The anion side. Okay, this is actually one anion. Like I said, you should always treat this guy as one thing. Okay, don't break up to sulfur in the four oxygens. So the anion will be SO four with negative two charge. You see this four belongs to this ion. This four does not indicate the ratio. The ratio here is uh, two to one. There's, there are two sodium cations, only one sulfur, uh, sulfate, I'm sorry, sulfate. Now the reason is because sodium has positive one charge, sulfate has negative two charge, okay? And the name will be, just use the name of metal sodium followed by the name of the polyatom ion, which is sulfate. Okay, watch out for the ending of the same eight. If you if it were SO4, then it would be a sulfite. Uh, very similarly, okay, next example is gonna be between iron and NO3. So iron, if you destruct this structure, okay, I'm gonna write over here. So the iron is a type two metal. So I wouldn't know what charge it has, but according to this formula, okay, here's what, what I can see here. You have one iron, and since there's no 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 other numbers after iron, okay, and there's a parenthesis covering NO3. Uh, you should recognize that this NO3 should be treated as one thing, okay. And because there are three of the NO3s, 
So you have to put another three outside. So you can see, obviously, you have to have a parenthesis here if you want to show the modability of the polyatomic ion. Otherwise, it will look like this, FeNO33. So that looks like NO33. So that's not right. So the, the parenthesis here is trying to show you, okay, what's been tripled here is the NO3 as a whole thing. So for that reason, okay, if you break it up into individual species, you will have one iron and NO3, okay, with negative one charge. That's that's for that's a that's a for sure. And there are three of NO3s. So because of the three outside the parenthesis, okay, the first three inside the parenthesis, this three next to oxygen belongs to this part of ion. And you have three of them, NO3, NO3. So this is the whole compound. Okay, so you can see there's one iron, three NO, NO3s, which includes three nitrogens and nine oxygens. Now, in order to balance the charge up here, okay, since you have three negative charges, so you can figure out this iron has a positive three charge. You see, this is how we figure out the charge of type two metals. You have to look at the counter ions, which is the negative side, and determine how many charges does the positive side have. So for because of this three, okay, so you can name this as iron three nitrate. This three is coming from this positive three. Okay. All right. So let's take a look a few more examples of this, okay. So here we're listing out a few uh, compounds. You can feel free to pause here and then try them out using the part time list. Okay, from either from your survival guide or use the PowerPoint notes. Okay, there's a part time list on the on the PowerPoint as well. All right. So the first thing usually when you look at the chemical formula or name is or uh, like you're providing formula here is do you see metals? Do you see obviously you see metals everywhere, right? Except this one, we talk about that one later. And for this one, you see a metal, manganese is a metal. And usually I will ask you to do the same, okay? List out, give a, if you're given the formula, you want to list out the cation, anion, and then the name. Okay, now manganese is a metal, but it is, is it type one or type two metal? It's a type two metal. So you would not know the charge for sure yet. Uh, on the right hand side, you have OH parenthesis 2. Usually, when you have a parenthesis, that's because you have multiple of this part time ion. Okay, so this 2 is indicating the amount or number of this part time ion. It shows the ratio between the this got two guys 1 to 2. Or, in other words, this 2 is not part of the ion. The, part, the ion is just OH. And you should look it up on the list, it has negative 1 charge. Now, because the negative one charge, and the, there are two of them, or in other words, if we break it up, it looks like this. So I guess it's not hard to see this manganese is positive two charge. Okay, so the name will be manganese two because of the positive two charge. Hydroxide. Hydroxide is the name of this guy, which with the negative one charge. Okay, all right, let's look at the next one. All right, Na2SO3. So the cation is, Na is a metal, and it's a type one metal, because we know and the sodium has a positive one charge. Na is SO3. Now, the last thing you want to do here is, do I break into SOOO? No. Okay, you should always treat SO3, this kind of part time ion, as one thing. And you should know there's a negative two charge. And for that reason, okay, you can see the sodium after sodium. There's a number two here. This number two shows there are two of this guy, and the sulf SO three. There's even though there's a three, but this three is part of the part of the sulfite. So this is the one thing, and there are two sodiums. Okay, so it should look like this: Na, Na, two sodiums. And uh, so three part time ions stay as one whole thing. Charge wise, uh, sodium is plus one plus one. This is negative two. So you can see it's balanced. Okay, the name will be um, sodium sulfite. 
Okay, SO3 is sulfite, SO3, SO4 is sulfate. No need in the Roman numerals because sodium is type 1 metal. Okay, uh, CaOH2 is calcium hydroxide. Uh, for the same reason, okay, calcium is plus 2 charge, type 1 metal, group 2. Hydroxide is OH negative 1 only, so there are two OH1s. So that's the cation, that's the anion. Okay, cation, anion. And don't include this two as part of the anion because it's not. It's just showing there are two anions. Okay, so, so you have to be really careful here. Some of these, the little numbers at the bottom, subscript numbers, if they are part of the ion, like this one. Some of these numbers are, they are not like these ones. Okay, I'm going to label them with different color, okay? They're just showing you the number of ions. Okay, it's the SO3, this three, it does not show the number of ions. It's part of the ion, okay? Now, this guy is kind of strange, okay? Okay, this guy does not contain any metal, but it does contain NH4, which is a positive charged polyatomic ion. So this guy will be named as it is. Okay, NH4 is called ammonium. And this Cr2O, CR2O7 has a name of dichromate. Okay, that's the name of this guy. Does not mean there are two of these, okay? It's just the name of this guy. Uh, because of the charge, positive 1 for ammonium, dichroma is negative 2. So you can see here, there are so many little numbers here, right? So first of all, NH4 is a whole thing. Okay, that 4 belongs to the polyatom ion. So the cation is NH4, positive 1 charge. Now this 2, the first number 2 outside the parenthesis, that's showing there are two ammoniums. That's not part of ion. It showed, but that shows how many ions, how many cations. And then the anion, okay, the anion is going to be Cr2O7. Cr2O7 with negative 2 charge. The both number 2 and 7, they are part of the ion. So this should be treated as one whole thing. This should be treated as one whole thing. And the ratio here is uh, 2 to 1. Okay, uh, Na3, um, PO4 is, excuse me, uh, NO3, PO4 is uh, sodium phosphate. Now, in this case, you can pause here, try to tell uh, yourself which number goes with the ion, which number does not, okay? So the cation will be Na without 3, positive 1 charge. Because that 3 does not go with the sodium. It shows you there are 3 sodiums. Na will be PO4. That 4 is part of the ion. And it has negative 3 charge as the whole thing. Okay, so, so the 3 here shows you how many of the ions. 3 sodiums. And since it's number one, so there's no need to put parenthesis number one outside the PO4. But the ratio here, number of phosphate here is um, one. Um, again, pay attention to the ending of the part of my own name. In this case, it's eight. So you should automatically link this to PO4 with the same negative three charge. It's called a phosphite. Okay, the ending here is the key. Uh, KClO3 is a potassium. Chlorate. Okay, one to one, positive one charge, negative one charge. So it's one to one. Okay, this three is part of part of it. This is cobalt chlorate. ClO3 is chlorate. The ClO4 is called the perchlorate. Now also be aware that uh, in this case, cation is cobalt positive wouldn't unknown charge because the cobalt is type 2 metal. Anion is ClO4 perchlorate. Alright, so this 4 is part of perchlorate, but 2 is not. So, with negative 1 charge. So this 2 shows you there are 2 of the negative 1 charge. So it goes like this, ClO4 as one thing, ClO4 as one thing again, so there are 2 of them. 
uh, balanced by one Kobo, so it's not hard to see this Kobo is positive two charge. So in the name, of you have to show a Roman number two after the Kobo. So it's Kobo two uh, perchlorate. Okay. Uh, so this does take a little bit of practice. I'm sure there are plenty of practice problems in the homework and in the actual credit quiz after the survival guide. Make sure you do a lot of practice. Get familiar with the rule. Get familiar with the elements. Get familiar with how you combine the cat and anion. How you balance the charge between them. Okay. All right.